The Giants are finally doing the right thing, giving up seemingly on the 2024 season, as they should, and looking ahead towards 2025 uh, by playing Marco Luciano specifically. This guy has been their top prospect, and he's going to play, I hope. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday, talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple passionate and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, been hosting this show for over five years, and I'm a lifelong Giants fan. Thank you for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. So check us out there if you have not already, and please hit that subscribe button wherever it is that you're following the show. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download GameTime today. What time is it? Game time. And coming up on today's show, we are going to get into the Giants doing the right thing finally, like by calling up Marco Luciano and Luis Matos yesterday. It was weird how they handled the whole situation after trading away uh, Jorge Soler, who, by the way, you know, there was, I published on Twitter, or posted or whatever, uh, a while back, Jorge Soler's numbers uh, versus Mark Canna's. Just, I just, I, I honestly just posted everybody the Giants traded their numbers and then everyone they traded for their numbers just to be factual. And I got a lot of heat for like, They should have done this or they should have done that. My point wasn't any of that. It was just to say, here are the numbers. But by the way, Jorge Soler not doing so well. now. He was doing well at that time offensively. But now, by the way, with the Braves, he's hitting 177 in almost 100 plate appearances with the Braves. 323 on base, but 392 slugging added all up. It's just about... 3% above league average production and then no defensive value, no base running value. So minus 0.4 fan graphs wins above replacement for Solaire. So that is continuing to look to me like a contract that they're glad they got rid of just by the way, because it was two more guaranteed years. But at the time they said, like literally said that this trade of Solaire opened up playing time for someone like Marco Luciano and then he barely played at all for the next, then he was like called up right afterwards and then he didn't play and so i don't know if that was just a bob melvin decision or what um there was some mistakes that he made we've consistently seen like young player type mistakes out of marco luciano including last night uh to be fair uh, but that's part of developing and that's part of evaluation at the major league level and so anyway, it was just weird that they didn't play him and then they sent him back down to Triple A. Uh, but finally, they've called him up and it does seem like there's no reason this time they wouldn't play him because Tyro Estrada is no longer on this roster and Casey Schmidt is no longer on this roster as he was optioned in a corresponding move. Luis Matos was also recalled from Sacramento and Blake Sable was optioned. I'm not entirely sure what the point of calling up Sable was for one game and then sending him back down. I really don't understand that exactly. But um, in terms of Luciano and Matos, Bob Melvin, manager Bob, Bob Melvin, had this to say. Obviously, they're here for a reason now, so they're going to get some at-bats. But it's also looking at how things go next year. We're looking towards next year and what the roster construction will look like then. These are some of our best prospects, and they're going to get a little bit of a look right now. And so I hope it's more, Bob, than a little bit of a look because there's no reason to not play, uh, you know, honestly, even over Michael Conforto. Like, they probably should have placed Conforto on waivers, although he would have gone unclaimed, I'm pretty sure, as well. Just like 
evidently Taylor Rogers was unclaimed, even though there was no formal announcement. None of the players the Giants put on waivers were claimed, and so Estrada ended up in AAA. They released Tyler Matzik, and Taylor Rogers went unclaimed, and they didn't do anything with him. They just kept him on the roster. So anyway, but like at a certain point, is it worth playing Luis Matos over a Michael Conforto who, you know, I get it. Maybe if you're holding out the faintest of hope, he probably gives you a slightly better chance at contending. I mean, contending. It's even like I can't even say it with a straight face this year. (laughs) But also, you don't really want to like make him look bad as he enters free agency. That's kind of like the decent thing to do is if you just put him on your bench, it kind of stinks uh, from his perspective, but then the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, there's just they're just not that good. Um, they're borderline, you know. In his Giants tenure, Michael Conforto has been two percent above major league average by weighted runs created plus, hitting two thirty four, three twenty two on base, four oh seven slugging, uh, just one point seven FanGraphs wins above replacement in almost almost nine hundred plate appearances, and so it's just not been great for Michael Conforto and this is the last year of his uh two-year contract and so you know should Luis Matos just be playing every day over a Michael Conforto you could definitely make a case that the answer is yes just for evaluation purposes like even if you expect the performance to be worse for Matos than for Conforto then I I mean you can still make a strong argument that uh, Mato should be playing, but it is a little bit complicated and benching a veteran like Conforto right before he hits free agency is kind of a bad look too. Um, but at the same time, you got to look out for your own organization, but you also don't want to anger players. So it's, it's kind of a delicate thing, but Luciano second base is open, you know, second base is open because yes, Brett Wisely is on the team. I hope that it's not just like mostly a platoon of Wisely and Luciano because frankly Luciano has a higher ceiling but I would think you know you never know players you know can break out Wisely it's not like he's old at all he's only 25 um, and he's had some success this year at the major league level Uh, so is Luciano though in a smaller sample but you know we've as we saw with Elliot Ramos this season Players who even at times struggled in AAA or struggled in the major leagues or both um, can break through. And so you really want a guy like Marco Luciano to break through. And so far, he just hasn't had enough of an opportunity. Matos has had a significantly has had significantly more opportunities than Luciano. Matos has had 398 major league plate appearances versus... Uh, 97 plate appearances for Marco Luciano. Um, but man, the, the chase rate for Luciano is like ridiculously low. He was walking 17% of the time, which is very high in triple a. Uh, so there's a lot to be intrigued by, but he's just got to start like hitting the ball with authority. Um, and yesterday was his first career outing at second base defensively uh, in the major leagues. It defensively, it didn't look good. His first, Innings anywhere other than shortstop were yesterday um, in the major leagues, but he hasn't graded out well defensively at short. He did not look good defensively at second in the sample of one game yesterday. But hey, when your you know playoff odds are whatever they are for the Giants, probably now like a what one tenth of one percent? Yeah, exactly. Um, 0.1 percent like they're uh, one in a thousand even that seems generous like they basically in that one in a thousand scenario go how many games do they have left um 23 they go like what 22 and one or something 20 and two 20 and three um yeah so uh they're not going to go to the playoffs and so play these guys and and look towards next year and another guy is Tristan Beck who made his season debut finally after that surgery uh, to repair an aneurysm in his throwing arm and so we'll get into the debut of Tristan Beck which was really impressive and more about these young players in just a minute and before we do. 
Today's episode of Locked on Giants is brought to you in part by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, as promised, we are going to get into more about the Giants' uh, young players here, you know, Luciano, Matos, but also Tristan Beck, who made his long-anticipated season debut yesterday. I think I read almost six months to the day from when he had his surgery to repair an aneurysm, which cropped up, they found out about it in spring training uh, in his in his throwing arm. Thanks again for making Lockdown Giants your first listen every day. For your second listen, enjoy the Lockdown MLB podcast. Host Paul Francis Sullivan, aka Sully, is here daily to provide national expertise with his trademark humor to help you get ready for the MLB playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Prepare for the fall classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day on Locked On MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And so, yeah, Marco Luciano, just to finish that thought on him, he ended up making a couple of bad plays at second base, uh, plays that should have been made. The Giants made three errors in the game trying to recall yeah so McCray made a throwing error Fitzgerald made a fielding error and then Luciano made a fielding error and then there was there was a play that wasn't an error by Luciano but also wasn't a good play in particular so you know the Giants had a lot of youth on the field in this game you know Kyle Harrison made the start he's just turned 23 they had Tyler Fitzgerald Elliot Ramos uh Patrick Bailey, Marco Luciano, Grant McRae in the starting lineup, um, Luis Matos pinch hit. And so there's a lot of youth here. And with you, you know, people have been clamoring for that. And you're going to get growing pains, but also you get the potential for breakout performances from young players, which is really what they need in a desperate way. And they've had some of them this year. Fitzgerald, Ramos uh, have probably been the brightest spots of the year I mean not even probably for sure those two have been the bright spots of the season and hopefully with 23 games left you can get some kind of momentum for a Marco Luciano a Grant McRae a Luis Matos like one of the three two of the three all of them in a perfect world but you know we'll see how that plays out but another guy who kind of got lost in the shuffle was Tristan Beck, uh, who unfortunately sustained a, you know, they discovered an aneurysm in his throwing arm and he had to have surgery to have it repaired. And he missed all season until now. He came back and finally made a season debut yesterday. And boy, was his stuff looking awful crisp, like real real nice coming out of his hand, in my opinion. Um, looking at kind of velocity numbers and stuff, his his average fastball, I mean, he threw the fastball 52.5% of the time. It averaged 93.7. Last year, it averaged 94.7. It's kind of not surprising. He's probably building up strength, really. Uh, he threw the slider 28% of the time. Last year, he threw a slider 55% of the time. Uh, it was down a couple miles an hour. Threw the cutter 20% of the time last year it was 8% of the time we're talking small samples here um, but you know he was locating well and I thought his pitches had kind of sharp movement to them last year Tristan Beck he only made three starts 
pitched in 33 games, but accumulated 85 innings in 33 games. So he was a multi-inning guy. And again, that was under Gabe Kapler. So it was a different situation. Whereas I think he has a chance to be a starter with Bob Melvin. I mean, there were times this season when the Giants could have really used him. They lost Keaton Wynn to an elbow injury and he wasn't very effective. Mason Black was not effective when they used him. So they certainly could have used Tristan Beck at times this season. Uh, but now he's thrown 88 and a third major league innings and he's got a 387 ERA. And last year, the expected ERA was even better than his actual ERA. And this year, It's been three and a third innings, but the expected ERA was 2.43. So he did allow a homer. He did walk. um, He did walk two, struck out four in three and a third. But more like when we're talking samples, like three and a third innings, it's more about what does it look like than what what are the what's the ERA, you know, because one run can just dramatically skew it one way or the other when we're talking that small of a sample. But I thought he looked really good. So it was great to see him back out there. And he definitely could be a guy who is in the starting rotation mix. Potentially, I mean, could he could he make starts down the stretch, you know? And I think the answer is yes. Right now they've got Logan Webb, Kyle Harrison, Hayden Birdsong, Blake Snell, and Mason Black in that rotation. And I think you could see Beck you know, fill in maybe if they want to shut down Kyle Harrison to limit his workload. He had a really rough outing yesterday. Uh, He allowed, what, seven, six earned runs in two and two thirds, Um, three strikeouts, one walk, seven hits, allowed a homer, allowed three in the first, one in the second, and two in the third. Um, Two of those runs coming in after he came out. Uh, Tristan Beck, I think it was, uh, yeah, allowed a hit that allowed two of those runners to score. It was a bit unfortunate, but still Harrison was not very good. And with the season lost, it's worth, if guys are tired, if guys are wearing down, you know, shutting guys down. And if you got a fresh arm like Tristan Beck, then maybe you let him and like Sean Jelly kind of eat up a game uh, instead of pushing a Kyle Harrison. So anyway, I just, I, I've, I really liked at times what I saw last year from Tristan Beck and he picked up right where he left off this year uh, in his season debut. And it's just great to have him back. You know, obviously it was scary to learn that of his uh, arm aneurysm, but he is back and it is worth pointing out. He's 28 years old. So we're not talking like 23, 22, like Kyle Harrison, Hayden Birdsong, 28 years old. Um, but still just 88 and a third innings of major league experience under his belt. And so when you look at next year's rotation, you start to look at, okay, Blake Snell is headed for an opt out. Um, And then there are a bunch of younger options. You've got Logan Webb under contract for four additional seasons. You've got Kyle Harrison. You've got Hayden Birdsong. You've got Mason Black. You've got uh, Sean Jelly as a potential option. I think they view Landon Roop as someone who could start. And now Tristan Beck as well. Robbie Ray, of course, is in that. Uh, he has an opt-out, but with his hamstring injury uh, and $50 million that he'd be walking away from, it's, to me, looking like Robbie Ray wouldn't opt out. And then Keaton Wynn, Jordan Hicks. So there's a lot of options there uh, for, for starting pitching next year I think you'd still like to bring in some impact like they did with Blake Snell but even then they'd have an abundance of starting pitching options going into 2025 and that's what this is all about at this point um so it's less it's the that's the thing we thought pitching and starting pitching was going to be the strength of this team coming into the season Logan Webb Blake Snell and then the young arms and depth and this and that but if you look at it and yesterday was a perfect example the Giants scored seven runs in the game and they lost so pitching has actually been the biggest issue even though people point to the offense they've allowed uh I mean their ERA 
in the league ranks 21st, just barely ahead of the Oakland A's and Washington Nationals. Those are the two teams directly behind the Giants. And you play at Oracle Park for half your games, you shouldn't be coming in 21st in ERA, but there they are. So, and then the starting pitching, which we've heard, you know, Farhan Zaidi said, we think we have the best starting rotation in baseball. Granted, he said that at a certain point in the season, but the starting pitching ranks 20th in ERA with at 433. And just for fun, since the All-Star break, since those comments, we think we have the best starting rotation in baseball. The Giants earned run average is to their credit it's not 20th but it is 15th it's not it's not great uh it's 426 era since the all-star or since did i say all-star break trade deadline trade deadline their fielding independent pitching ranks seventh expected fielding independent pitching ranks third and so look with some better i don't know luck whatever it may be they Perhaps could have been better, but coulda, woulda, shoulda. It's all seemingly well too late for that. And we are looking ahead towards 2025. So one guy who is on the 2024 team and could be making his last few starts as a Giant ever is Blake Snell. And what a month of August he had. So good, in fact, that he was named the National League Pitcher of the Month in the month of August. So we will get get into uh, the accolade for Blake Snell in just a minute and before we do. Today's episode of Locked on Giants is brought to you in part by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike on other apps, on Prize Picks it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. And prize picks is the best way to get on uh, the action in sports in most states, including California, Texas, and Georgia. So I've had a lot of fun playing prize picks all year, and I'm playing again tonight. I've got three players selected for tonight's uh, game. I've got Lamont Wade Jr. You can see if you're on YouTube uh, on my phone here. More than half a walk. He drew three last night, and he's great at drawing walks. Marco Luciano, more than half a strikeout. And Zach Gallen, more than four and a half strikeouts. Giants have been striking out a lot lately. And with these young players, there's a strikeout tendency to even go up. And that is... uh, a $31.25 power play, three picks to pay $100. So anyway, download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked on MLB and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code all lowercase Locked on MLB on Prize Picks and get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Today's episode is also brought to you in part by Game Time. I love going to Giants games uh, in during the season on the road. It's one of my favorite things to do. Been doing it for years. This year, I've been to San Diego, Los Angeles, Boston, Denver. Potentially uh, gonna make a September trip somewhere as well. And Game Time has been a game changer for me. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. My personal favorite things are the panoramic views from your seat and the app before you buy, which is super important if I'm going to a new venue. I don't know what the view is like from the seat, How what is the angle like up you know, vertically, and so that's huge. And then also the game time guarantee means game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. 
All right, here we go. We're going to get into Blake Snell winning National League Pitcher of the Month in August. It's really not a surprise given uh, when I read through you some of the numbers that he put up in August. And also just we'll touch upon the fact that he's likely gone. It's going to be yet another uh, pitcher, likely in my opinion, who we see dominate in a Giants uniform for a season or two in the case of Kevin Gosman, and then depart for, I don't want to say greener pastures, but greener in the sense of money, like in the, you know, a long-term deal. The thing is, Blake Snell, he's not that young. And so I'm, I'll am i be very interested to see what kind of deal he ultimately gets. Um, but yeah, you could have made a case for Chris Sale here uh, when I... But Blake Snell, I mean, he threw his no hitter in the month of August, and so it's it's actually kind of a no brainer to me that Blake Snell wins this award. So the Giants media department sent out uh, the announcement that Blake Snell was the National League Pitcher of the Month in August, and it says Snell earned his fifth Career Pitcher of the Month award after previously winning twice last year in June and September slash October. Uh, and twice in 2018, August and September, both of his Cy Young award-winning seasons. He is the first Giants pitcher to win the award since Kevin Gosman in May 2021. He's the 15th Giants pitcher and 18th occurrence to win the award overall, and the first Giants left-hander to win the award since Madison Bumgarner won in August 2014. <clears throat> so continuing on, MLB which put out this press release um, detailed Snell's performance in the month of August saying that across six starts, he had a 164 ERA 53 strikeouts in 38 and a third innings against 16 walks held opponents to a 125 average. And that's 12.44 strikeouts per nine. He led the majors in strikeouts was third in opponent's average, fifth in whip, walks, plus hits per innings pitched, tied for fifth in innings pitched, and sixth in ERA. He threw a no-hitter on August 2nd at Cincinnati. First Giants no-hitter since Chris Heston in 2015. Uh, Three walks, 11 strikeouts, pitched into the ninth for the first time in his career. And uh, he joined... Uh, trying to make sense. There's like a weird error in their press release here. But he it says the defending NL Cy Young winner is one of four pitchers with at least 50 strikeouts in a month this season, joining Garrett Crochet, Tyler Glasnow, and Jack Flaherty. He's the first Giants pitcher with at least 50 strikeouts in a single month since Carlos Rodon. It's funny, I'm naming all these pitchers who came here on one-year deal. This is like one area where they've had a lot of success. I mentioned this yesterday. It's a success, and it's also kind of an annoyance to fans. You're getting these great performances from these individual pitchers, Gosman, Rodon, Snell, uh, and then they leave. They're here for a year or two, and then they leave, and it's it's an annoyance. It's great that you get that production in that year, but people don't like to see them leave, but that's what's happened. So they go on to say the 2018 AL Cy Young winner, but also the 2021 NL Cy Young winner, Threw at least six innings in five of his six starts and went at least seven innings in three of the starts. He closed out the month, allowing one run on four hits with eight strikeouts across seven innings at Oracle Park on August 30th. Prior to the start, he had not allowed a run in four straight home starts, marking the longest such streak in Giants franchise history by a non-opener. He is one of 26 pitchers in ALNL history to have four straight home starts with zero runs allowed while pitching at least five innings in each start and the only of those pitchers to do it twice he did it he also did it with san diego last year so yeah dominant uh season for snell in the time that he specifically came back from his second stint on the il we're talking he's made just 16 starts this year versus 32 last year so he's gonna get he's gonna make probably four or five more starts um, obviously missed like two months with injuries, same injury both times, probably had a lot to do with him signing late. He also really struggled before c- 
coming back, basically struggled until July. Um, he is known as a second half guy, and my goodness, has he been a second half guy? Um, yeah, it was July 9th when he came back for good, and he hasn't gone on the injured list since. And since that time, he's got a 130 ERA, 204 fielding independent pitching. It's just been utterly dominant. He's had like one rough outing mixed in there. I mean, if you can even call it that. He went three innings, allowed two runs, walked six. He also went had one inning, one outing where he went six innings, allowed three runs. But those are the two quote-unquote bad starts. Otherwise, it's just been utter and complete dominance. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, he's pitched so well that he's a clear opt-out at this point unless he gets injured. Um, and he is going to be 32 in December, right around the time of the winter meetings, like, if not at the winter meetings, he'll turn 32. And so what, how many years does a pitcher who's put up this kind of performance in back-to-back seasons get despite being 32 all of next year? I'll, I'll be very curious to see. I can't see him getting much more that like five would kind of be the max that I would see and maybe less, but given how good the performance has been like five, I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see what the contract is, but I would based on track record, not expect his next team or in terms of where he is uh, next year, I would not expect it to be the Giants. And uh, that's, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will will want him back, but particularly given his age, I don't see it happening. But Matt Chapman, more likely. But even then, it's like, even if you brought this whole team back, they're, what, three games under 500, so they need even more. So... That's a problem, and if you get into yesterday's episode, I talk about the problems with this organization and what they could and maybe should do about it. So check out yesterday's episode for more about that. Anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen today. Every dayers tomorrow, we'll be breaking down uh, whatever we see you know, with an eye towards the future out of this game tonight. Hayden Birdsong on the mound, Zach Gallen on the mound for the D-backs. Uh, Giants not playing for much, but playing spoiler potentially and, and for the future. For your next listen, go check out Locked on MLB with Sully. Prepare for the fall classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day. You can find the link to Locked on MLB in the description so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on X at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot, so thank you in advance, and thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening today. You are now Locked on Giants.